Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And for some reason, we're talking more about Shazam 2 than anybody did before Shazam 2 came out. Which, which is the problem. Which is the problem. Uh, we're going to do another another post-mortem. This is like a post-post-mortem on Shazam Fury of the Gods. It is kicking the dead horse at this point. Uh, yeah, it was pretty much dead on arrival. So this is the woman who plays, what, the, uh, the mother yes. on the show, uh, Mama Rosa. And she's saying that she blames politics on the critical score being so low. And that's kind of an interesting take on this. We've heard the trolls. Zach Levi actually seemed like he was kind of taking it in stride. Basically, it came down to we've we've had, let's see, The Rock blamed for it. We've had the uh, the Snyderverse fans blamed right. for it. Now we got politics. Uh, Levi says it was a lack of marketing. Which, which I, I think Levi is correct. I think he's absolutely correct. Uh, I forgot this movie was even a thing. People didn't know it was out yet. They didn't know it was coming out. I think that teamed up with they, DC before the movie came out announced, hey, we're gonna undo it all and start again. People don't like, why do I bother going? Because it's not gonna matter, you know? Yeah, and, and just from a normie point of view, people are probably like, Shazam, didn't they have another Shazam movie with The Rock in and it? it? Did, and it wasn't that good and or it didn't do very good. well or whatever. And that was like, what, it's like six months ago? It wasn't even six months ago. It was like, it was like November, was it November? Yeah, it was like four months. I don't even remember. Yeah. I mean, that's how much I, I didn't care. So people were probably like, wait, another Shazam? What the hell's going on here? Um, yeah, most, most people forgot about it. And a lot of people just are like, hey, DC's getting rebooted anyway. So whatever, whatever. But here's another excuse for Shazam. At the end of the day, it just felt like to me that Warner Brothers was just kind of flushing it out of the system. You know? oh, what's sad though is the actors all keep saying, um, "Well, this movie was just about fun and about a fun movie for families to have fun." And what's sad is that's what everybody keeps asking for, and then it yeah. comes out, and then no one goes to it. But that's on that's on DC. It's it's weird because the movies that are just fun movies, it seems like DC doesn't promote them. It because mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking at the original Shazam didn't have a lot of I mean. It had a lot more promotion than this one, but yeah. it wasn't promoted as heavily as like Aquaman or. Well, they're probably figuring why throw good money after bad because we know we're we're axing all this crap. So yeah, it kind of reminds me of of Disney with like um what was it Strange Planet or whatever it was Strange World Strange World yeah the cartoon they basically just yeah, yeah that's how much I remember about it uh, they basically just dumped it in the theater because they're like we have to do it but then we can take the loss. Is a write off. Well, this reminds me too, like of of Marvel when they were taking all the the, the marketing budget from Shang Chi, yeah. and putting it onto Eternals to try to get people to go to the Eternals, yeah. but no one go to the Eternals because they didn't care. Um, Shang Chi actually did better than people expected, but it still had more marketing, even with the budget being pulled, than I think Shazam did. Yes, yes. The so, second one, this one. Yeah. So let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, almost three hundred thousand subs, less than a thousand to go. Hit the subscribe button. Um, yeah, this is just a weird time. It's, everything is in a state of flux right now. Uh, Warner is in a state of flux. It seems like the only DC movie you hear anything about is The Flash. Mm -hmm. Which sadly, sadly, which uh, I don't understand why it hasn't been canceled yet. And I'm thinking they're looking at it like, OK, we got Michael Keaton and it's going to be like Spider-Man No Way Home. That's you exactly know. what they're thinking. Yeah, it's going to be like, this is going to be the biggest thing, man. This and let's is be honest. If you take the stuff away, like all the, the different, the different, you know, people they have coming into it. Mm -hmm. And, my, you know, Michael Keaton and all the other people, no one would give a shit because it's, it's Ezra Miller alone. They're like, we don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Um, but people are excited about Michael Keaton. I've seen people posting on social media pictures of the new McFarlane Michael Keaton Batman figure. Let's be no, honest, it's Michael Keaton who everybody wants. Michael Keaton is why people are going to go see this movie. And uh, that, so they're actually, I mean, they, they, they should have just done a Batman movie with Michael Keaton and called it a day. Batman Beyond. Money in the bank. But that makes too much damn sense. Yeah. Yeah, do you, yeah. I, I don't even know what the hell's going on at Warner Brothers. At first, I thought Zaslav had a plan. I'm like, I don't think he has a plan. I think he's basically just chopping, chopping shit, and uh, just kind of going to float for the next three, four years and then sell this company to somebody mm -hmm. else. Anyway, Shazam Two Star speaks out on critics' negative reviews coming from the direct exclusive, exclusive. So it only did uh, did worse than we thought. We we said uh, thirty five million dollars did thirty million dollars. Oh, um, yeah. And it was thirty-six million dollars behind uh, Black Adam, so I think Black Adam probably didn't didn't help. No, a major part of the poor commercial opening is the equally negative reception by critics. No, see, you know, mm. I, I would argue that though, because we've had a lot of movies that that the critics hated that still did well. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm thinking Alita did a lot better than, than people thought it was going to do. Um, hell, Batman versus Superman was mm-hmm. slammed and, and it did OK. It didn't do fantastic, but it did better than people thought it was going to do. The original was reviewed well. It was a fun movie, earning a 90 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, while Fury of the Gods currently sits at a rotten 51 percent. Mama Rosa actress uh, Marta Milans believes part of the reason for the negative reaction was due to some politics. Now, I don't think she's talking like Trumpism. I think she's probably thinking like, I don't know, the politics of the critical thing. Uh, in an exclusive conversation with the direct, um, she said she responded to the negative reception of the DC uh, DCU's latest star. Believe there's a lot of politics involved and there's a political agenda amongst, amongst critics. critics. That's key. Um, that actually is true. There are movies that are uh, of a certain certain side of the aisle that tend to do considerably better if critically. You're, oh, if you're overtly. And this one was more about just being a basically fun movie from my understanding. It wasn't – people want a fun movie. We're going to give them a fun movie. Yeah. But, but then you have to advertise movies. People know it's coming out. Yeah. I know there uh, there is a lot of politics involved and a lot of hardcore fans – of one side, on the other side, a lot of haters on the internet. A lot of critics feel like they have a political agenda rather than actually sitting and watching the film and enjoying it. Actually, I think she's right there because a lot of times you'll see a critic's reaction will be like, it's hollow and vapid and just a toy commercial. It's just fun. Where's all the deep commentary on our social ills? Yeah, if it's politically charged and and a commentary on whatever that leans very far one way, the the, the, the the politics are obvious. The critics love it. Almost always. While expressing her frustration, Milan's made it a point to explain that Shazam 2 isn't trying to push an agenda. what people said they want. And question the idea that celebrating fun isn't good enough. We're not trying to push any agenda. Um, Unlike freaking Ant-Man 3, which was like, yay, socialism. Yeah, pretty much. Um, We're not trying to prove any point. And I don't know uh, what it's about. I don't know if it's our society nowadays that celebrating fun isn't good enough. No, actually, actually, it's the opposite. That's what people want. The thing is is that uh, the media tends to gatekeep apolitical fun content or they find problems with it, you know, to run it down. I mean, I, I, I will give her this because we've seen it with critics. Look at The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was strictly a political It was shit. Thing. And they loved it. They loved it. Because and then when The Rise of Skywalker walked it back, they all hated it. They all hated it. A movie that you just go and feel good about and you have a good laugh and you see you see the shazam Is that what they're calling him? Apparently. The shazam that seems to be good enough for some people. Uh, Milan's remains hopeful for a potential third film because of the franchise's special story and feel good sensation. That's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and and she goes on to say something which I was going to bring up um, actually anyway. I think besides the fact people just didn't know it was out is I, we've mentioned it before is that people are just so tired of superhero movies. They're like, everybody's ready to want to go see Mario, which is going to do really well. We're talking about that later and some other things. And people are all about, um, other, John Wick's doing really well. Um, they're about movies that aren't superhero films. And I think people are just over superheroes, and we've mentioned it before. So I think it's a combination of lack of, of promotion. People don't know it's out yet. People didn't know it's coming. And people are just so effing tired of superhero movies. The sad thing is that if it is just a movie that was made just to be for fun, and like what people are saying that they ask, they're asking for and they give it to you, and people don't go to it, that they're, the takeaway is going to be people don't want to see these kind of, they want the political movies. And that's not the truth. It's just that they got caught up in the middle of all this. Uh, yeah. And it, look, this this one, it just, and we haven't seen it. I honest to God forgot it was even coming out because we weren't reminded it was coming out compared to Black Adam where they spent a ton of money on promotion. Mm-hmm. Like you could not get away from Black Adam. But it didn't do well. It didn't do well. And I do I do believe that Black Adam probably hurt Shazam, not in the way, you know, that they were talking that uh, Dwayne Johnson was tanking the movie specifically. But I think people were like, oh, that was a Shazam movie. That one sucked or whatever. Or just, or, I'm just over superhero. Or I'm just over it. What did she say? She said, I know if there's a superhero fatigue, it might be. It's clear that there's a superhero fatigue in the critics' world where you have all those trolls that just make some necessary hatred comments and are just so uncalled for that I should stop reading it over the weekend because I was like, you know what? It's just not worth it. I'm not really sure what she's talking about. Is she th- saying the critics are trolls? I think she's saying the critics are making trolling comments is what I think she's saying. Yeah, she, it's about critics. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't care how many critics say one thing, how many reviews, how many the uh, box office numbers. It's understandable that these big movies of this size, inevitably, they have to perform at the box office because they cost 
a lot of money. Um, that's just a fact. At the end of the day, this is a business. No one is doing this for the love of art. They're doing it because they have to make money. I get that. Um, but I think it's I think it's a combination. There, there are so many things that went wrong. And really, I mean, just from a business perspective, I'm looking at this and I'm like, this to me, this is Warner Brothers just flushing the remaining old DCEU movies out of their system to get ready for the James gunn or whatever the hell they're going to call it. And, you know, we've got Aquaman 2, I guess, is still a thing. And that's probably going to get the same treatment. They're probably just going to flush it out. And People are just like, it's a, it wasn't advertised. No. People are over superheroes. And um, I think people just, you know, they didn't bother because they, they figured it's all going to not matter anyway after they reboot it. Yeah. So why bother? I think it was those three things. I don't think it was people are hateful or they're just, you know, assholes. Do I think critics, you know, downgrade, you know, the reviews on things because it's not political enough? Yeah, I totally think yeah. that. But I also know people are smart enough now to know critical scores mean jack shit. Yeah. And most people don't even listen to them anymore. Yeah. So Shazam fizzled, uh, did a lot worse than I thought it was going to do. Mm -hmm. I was actually expecting 40 to 50 million, but um, there we go. It is what it is. Here we are. So mm -hmm. uh, it's too late to blame anybody at this point. There's probably not going to be a Shazam 3, and that's that's it. Yeah. And this, uh, the sad takeaway is they deliberately went into it trying to make a fun movie that has nothing yeah. to do with politics, and it failed. That the takeaway is going to be people want politics when they don't. So, yeah. I mean, that's, the, that's just the sad I don't know. You know, consequence of it all. But All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.